GRDC's Dealing with the Dry Forums brings together keynote speakers, one of which is Gary Littlejohns. Gary has a, a strong background in banking and is currently working as an agronomist. Uh, well, I was an agronomist for uh, 15 odd years and then went across to banking. I've been in banking for 12 years and I've just got out of that 12 months ago, back into agronomy again. So I think they thought that I could come with a pretty candid view of the banking setup and the system and uh, tell it pretty straight how it is. So uh, I think that's the value that I bring to the table probably. So the Royal Commission's had a uh, reasonable impact already on the farming sector. Uh, they've introduced a lot of new rules around uh, certainly not allowed to charge excess interest on uh, areas that are drought declared and they've made a four eyes policy internally within the banks to make sure that somebody's overviewing accounts that they deem to be stressed uh, by drought. So they're placing a lot more diligence around those guys than they used to but what the result of that has been that it's tightened up credit as well. So it's made money harder to get um, for all those same reasons that they're having to do more due diligence than they've ever done previously. And they've also had to uh, introduce a layer of compliance that's never been an issue before, but it's really increased the workload of the banking sector. Yeah, so certainly we would be uh, suggesting or recommending that the farmers are keeping close contact with their banks because this whole compliance layer has slowed the process down of introducing more funds, working capital into the farms. So it's dragged it out where it used to be a you know a two to five day turnaround to put extra capital out the door for working process. Uh, now it's come out to probably four weeks. So you really need to be proactive around managing that process and making sure that you're ahead of the game and more prepared than you used to be previously. So what I mean by being proactive around being prepared to go to your bank is that having all your budgets available, uh, up to date asset and liability statements, all the things that the banks need to assess to put you in a position to, to uh, determine whether you're going to get more funding or not, I guess. And so you certainly need to be going back and having your BAS statements up to date and talking to your accountant, getting all the information up to date that you need to have uh, because the review process is certainly forefront of the bank's ability to operate on your behalf to, for carry on funding. Yeah, so if you've got your uh, cash flow budgets worked out and you know how much you need and for how long, certainly that will put you in a better position with the banks and they have an understanding then of what, you, what your budget looks like. Um, because one of the Royal Commission findings certainly was that in the past they've been allowed to prepare budgets on the client's behalf and they've said that's an absolute no-no going forward. So it's, the budget has to be prepared by the client uh, because there was conjecture around who was responsible for that budget. The bank prepared it and it didn't come to fruition whose responsibility was it to say where, where did that variation come from. Now they're saying well if the borrower has prepared it then there's no argument around. And, and certainly in a drought they're understanding around variations between actuals and budgets. Um, there's always going to be fluctuations depending on what the seasonal outcome comes to but you know if there's a, is a, there's a cropping opportunity there certainly for some summer crops still it's not too late. Um, people need to be well in advance of having that funding available. Yeah, so the key in a drought period for the growers certainly is maintaining that communication with their bank around uh, making sure that they've got the avenue open to make sure that they're going to get the ongoing funding assistance that they may or may not need. Um, so it's really important that they're informing the bank ahead of the line when they're going to need more money or what their plans are. So lay a plan on the table. If you don't have a plan, the bank really is not going to be prepared to support somebody if they just come in and ask for ongoing funding without having a strategy there that they can lay on the table. Really important that you can say, I've planned to plant, uh, you know, so many hectares of crop this summer. I've got X amount of soil moisture and so I've got a reasonable likelihood of success there. Without all that additional information, uh, it's really difficult for the banks to assess is this likely to be a successful or a risky project. So really important that they're aware of those sort of things. And then following on to that, then they've also got to be aware that uh, some of the inputs that they may or may not require are going to be difficult to get hold of this year. So certainly seed and fertiliser. Fertiliser is freely available, um, but it's at, a, it's at a cheap price at the moment because there's no demand for it. So the, the companies that, that supply fertiliser are certainly in a position to, to, to negotiate. Um, but seed is very tight, so they're extracting a premium to the market. But on the other side of that, I think making sure that you've got seed and you're in a position where you can plant is, is key. So make sure that you're talking to your supplier around availability and putting your hand on some. And you don't necessarily have to buy it up front, but I think if you're getting it, making it aware of how much you're likely to need, Certainly there's a lot of seed that's been stored in on farm in the past that may or may not have a good germ test. Um, important that they go back and test that before they plan to use it because it mightn't be up to scratch. Uh, and it may mean that you need to step into some of this expensive seed that is going around, but 
it's still going to give you a better outcome than plenty of a crop that's only got a 30% germination rate. So really, really important that you're aware of those type of things. But the costing uh, issue for farmers, I think trying to look down the line and where you can save money, I think making sure that you get everything right, your preparation's right, your fallows are clean, you're trying to preserve as much moisture as you can. And it's difficult to maintain any ground cover, I know, but moisture is going to be the key to getting a successful outcome on the next crop. It's going to be very tight to get it through. So preserve what you can and make sure that you're chasing moisture when you're planting, you've got, you're using the right gear. And it may mean that you need to go to a neighbour who's got uh, some moisture seeking gear or better press wheels and things so that you're getting a better germination. It's certainly that can be the difference between a success and failure in a marginal season. Uh, I guess there's a lot of conjecture in the marketplace at the moment around is there going to be foreclosures, uh, where, do, where do people stand? I think it's a case by case basis but certainly you need to be looking at it and talking to your bank and, and asking the hard questions from those guys and saying well how do you view me, am I too highly geared, do I need to be do, considering capital uh, debt repayment or selling assets or where do, I, where do I stand in that regard? And I think they'll be pretty honest with you, they, they'll give you honest feedback in terms of what they see as a strategy because some people, it's going to be a very slow lift out of this drought. Uh, while commodity prices are strong, that's certainly in our favour. And you know, if we can achieve some yields, there's some good gains to be made there on the back of those strong grain prices. But probably there's a reason there to go to a risk, a low risk enterprise as well. Don't be growing a crop that you're not comfortable with. Uh, making sure that you, you're growing a crop that you know that you can get a result on and it's suitable for the season and the moisture conditions that you have available in the paddock. Um, all those things will paint you in a better light from a bank perspective in terms of saying why we should back this guy long term. No one wants to be in a position where they're getting tapped on the shoulder and said, you know, we think you need to consider selling or uh, I think that's, that's the last resort for any farmers. And, and certainly there's a lot of ageing farmers out there who are contemplating that anyway, irrespective of their debt position. And you know, all those things say that there's probably going to be a lot of places hit the market when this drought stops, irrespective of financial stress. So. Is it the right time to get in or out? I don't know. Certainly we're going to see a plateauing out in values of properties, I think, and that may carry on for some time. Based on, you know, I think there's a lot of people wondering, is this the new norm? Are we going to see more dry periods going forward? So you need to be prepared for that and making sure that you're aware that you can cope with longer extended periods of dry. Uh, making sure you're maintaining adequate ground cover certainly is the key to making sure you're not getting these high evaporation losses, soil losses from wind erosion that we're certainly experiencing at the moment. Uh, all those things you can do long term to look at maybe even mixing up a commodity enterprise as well, making sure that you're, you're using multiple crops where available, more, more water use efficient crops, all those things that you can do to be proactive around you know, moving forward in, in the best fashion that you can. Yeah, also very important for growers to make sure that they have got that seed and fertiliser availability and, and paid for, ready to go, so that when we get a break they're, they're in a position to move forward. It's, you know, don't let an opportunity pass. If we get a good break and everybody's in a mad rush to get it, it's, it's going to be hard to get hold of for sure. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.